Hi, this is Slater speaking in my more normal tone of voice. And I'd like to show you how to make a very inexpensive talk box. And partly I want to show you because it's a lot of fun. Partly because you can't make this project without gaining an appreciation for how incredible our vocal tracks are. We take raw sound and we sculpt it into speech, particularly uh, vowels. The first time I ever heard a talk box was back in the 1970s with a Peter Frampton tune called, Do You Feel Like We Do? But I thought that that sound was made by electronic filters or electronic modulation. I didn't realize that it actually came from acoustic manipulation with, with a person's vocal tract. He has a separate microphone with the box on the stage and a tube coming from the box which he puts in his mouth and he creates those sounds. So how do we make sense of this? Long before they can talk, babies coo. This is the raw sound we make with our throat in our vocal folds. If you talk and touch your throat, you can actually feel the vibrations that you're making with your vocal folds. Then as they get older, kids learn to shape the raw sound into vowels of speech just by the way they shape their mouth. I put together a crude traditional talk box where you jack the output of a musical instrument to an amplifier, then a speaker. Speaker from a boom box didn't work well, but horn type speakers work great. They drive a narrow column of air with musical vibrations. Then I further shape the sound using my mouth as a resonant chamber. And if you have somebody with musical talent, it sounds really good. Back in the 1950s, Don Herbert, AKA Mr. Wizard, showed the world how to flatten the end of a drinking straw and cut flaps, or reeds, so as to create vibration. Mr. Wizard showed how making the instrument shorter made the pitch higher. I went the opposite direction to make the pitch lower and used a balloon to power it. I found that I could make an engaging talk box for about 10 cents albeit one without much pitch control. So the whole idea of a talk box is to replace the vibrations we make in our throat with the talk box vibrations, but we still use our mouth to sculpt that sound. But that raises the question, could we get rid of our mouths too? Wow. So how can this be? When we contain air in a certain shape and set it to vibrating, it 
gets its own signature sound. It almost comes alive. Depending on what the shape is, determines what sound is produced. When we have simple shapes, we get simple sounds. And as we get more complex shapes that we contain the air in, it vibrates and comes alive in very unique, complex ways. I think some of the spirit of these projects is captured by a psalm that talks about how we're knit in our mother's womb and how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And wherever, however people balance their science with their theology, I hope that all of us can from time to time step back from what we normally do, and me as much as anyone, what we normally do is just take everything for granted. But there's really something there if we just open our eyes. I have to warn you that making the reads for this project is not easy. It's a skill. And like any new skill, it's going to take time to learn how to do it. That's life. All right, enough lecturing. You're going to need tape, a really good pair of scissors, and of course some straws. I use flexible drinking straws. I think that the quarter inch or six millimeter straws are better than the thinner ones. I can make the five millimeter ones work, but they're a little bit trickier. I also have good results from the straws you get from fast food places, those nice big fat ones. They're not flexible, but they still work well. Start by flattening about half of the small part of the straw let's say an inch and a quarter or 30 millimeters or so, with your teeth. Use your front teeth. Concentrate on the sides, not the middle. It takes lots of passes to get the straw flattened enough. Most people don't flatten it enough at first. Next, cut the reeds. Start with the angle I'm cutting now, and you'll experiment with it as time goes on. The reeds usually stick together when you cut them, so you have to squeeze them gently to separate them. I cut a little bit off the sharp point. If the reeds are close but not touching, you might get a sound now. Put your lips about where my fingers are. You don't want to interfere with the reed vibrating. Put it in your mouth and toot. If air goes through, but you don't get any sound, probably your flaps are too far apart. If you toot a lot harder, you might get it to work. If hardly any air gets through, they may be too close. Play with it. Reads closer together, farther apart, more pressure, less pressure. Keep working on it until you get it. You can also draw air into the other end and watch it vibrate. You don't have to use a balloon for the talk box. Matching the balloon to the reeds is really challenging. Smaller balloons are generally easier to get working than the bigger uh, 12 inch, 30 centimeter balloons like this. These are trickier. I try to drop the reeds in past the neck of the balloon and then sort of wrap it and close it off and if you decide to forego the balloon and share a talk box you'll notice that some moisture collects inside the talk box water is a byproduct of respiration it's not spit. So go ahead and rinse it out, but don't go overboard with this.
Come on, come on, come on. Uh. <laughs>